All right, everybody, welcome back. Today, we're going to be doing kind of a fun video. This is a uh, unboxing and look at a real Blanc Pond Swatch versus a fake Blanc Pond Swatch. See if we can uh, determine some differences and spot some, some telltale signs that you're looking at a fake. Uh, go ahead and start um, unboxing these two watches. I'll start with the, the real one first. I will do a quick wrist check here. Just kidding. <laughs> that is a... Uh, a Seiko watch that, or a Seiko clock, I should say, that I just got as a gift from a friend. So I thought that would be kind of a fun thing to throw in there. Let's start with the Blanc Pond, uh, the legitimate Blanc Pond Swatch collaboration. We have really nice packaging, first off, um, way nicer than the Moon Swatch packaging for sure. We've got a pretty nice watch um, case in here with a zipper pouch, and then We've got some warranty stuff and pamphlet material. And then I did unzip this, but here we have the Block Pond Swatch. This is the Atlantic Ocean edition on the NATO strap. And then I do have two of these fakes that I just got today. Um, so let's go ahead and look at that. First off, obviously the packaging is completely different. We have um, much smaller packaging, just standard like jewelry box stuff here. And this is the Atlantic Ocean Edition. So we can definitely compare those two side by side when I have this out of the packaging. Looks pretty close. And then the second one is this Arctic Edition. Maybe it's the Antarctic. I can't remember the terminology for these, but this has the water indicator on the dial. Um, whereas the Atlantic does not. Um, and obviously the color's different as well. So let me get these out of the packaging and then we'll start our, our comparison here. And so far, the biggest tell, let me take this plastic off. The biggest tell is the color. Um, we've got a darker blue on the legitimate model. We also seem to be missing the um, lug screws for the drilled lugs here. These are hex key uh, screws, 0.9 millimeter, and they are not present on the fake. It looks like we just have spring bars, but they are drilled out. We also have a different colored bezel. So the bezel on the legitimate Blanc Pond swatch is more of a blue, whereas the one on the fake is a black. Um, the other main difference right away, the dial is darker on the fake than it is on the real one. And it appears that the seconds hand is struggling very, <laughs> very hard on the fake. Uh, that seconds hand does not look good, does not look healthy. Whereas on the legitimate model, um, it looks fine. All right, it kind of was a pain to set that date on the fake, um, it does have a quick set date position. You pull the crown out to the first position and then you counterclockwise turn and that's how you quick set the date. Um, and of course, now that we're zoomed in, you can see what I'm saying about the seconds hand. It is very uh, jumpy and kind of just an ugly movement on the seconds hand, whereas the legitimate model has kind of a clean sweep. Of course, this is the System 51 automatic movement from Swatch and I'm assuming these fakes are quartz uh, so that's to be expected. The font on the date window for the fake is not the same as it is on the legitimate model, as well as the date window itself being a completely different color. The fake is using more of a navy blue and it has a larger date window cutout. And the uh, legitimate model has kind of a gray blue tone to it and a smaller, uh, tighter, like more clean cut date window. But um, you'll see Looking at the two, you have kind of, um, these these numbers have like depth to them almost. They're not just a single solid piece. It looks like the loom is applied on the interior um, of, the, of the number here. And then same thing with the indexes here. You have a triangle with applied loom uh, inside. Handset similar uh, as well, as well as that seconds hand. It, on the fake, it looks like the numbers are almost just entirely loom. 
the the indexes look a little bit better than the numbers do, but uh, definitely not using the same loom, at least um, from what I can tell so far. The handset, um, the blue on the second hand is completely different than it is on the legitimate model. Um, and I, I don't even know if they're using black or gray on the, on the real one or not. But um, let's look at the crystal as well. You have flat sapphire, or not sapphire, um, it's like scratch resistant acrylic basically. The weird thing about the legitimate model is it has sapphire crystal on the back but not on the front. Uh, the Moon Swatch had a ton of issues with scratching on the acrylic so they did add a anti-scratch coating to this but it is not sapphire. Um, there is more of a bubble on the fake than there is on the real one and you can see that here side by side. Uh, looking at the word swatch on the side of the case here, um, it's clear that the font is not correct. If you look at the T on the fake here on the bottom, uh, it doesn't curve the way that it does on the, the legit model here on the top. Uh, so that's another giveaway. Looking at where the case meets the case back, it is a little more seamless on the, the legit model here, uh, whereas there's a clear uh, separation line here on the fake. Um, bezel so far appears to be more or less the same. It looks a little bit more notched and cut out here on the on the real one and a little more smooth on the fake the other side we have the crown and looks for the most part the same again you can tell the fake is a little smoother and uh you know even just touching the two crowns this has like sharper edges to it uh probably a lot easier to grip and turn and then the uh the signed crown is just a little bit cleaner on the real one. And that's a better look here at the hex key that we have on uh, the real one and the missing one on the fake. It's actually probably more desirable to have just a standard spring bar with the drilled lugs, but that's okay. The real Blanc Pond uses these hex keys, so I think that's what they were going for. Looking at the NATO strap, uh, this is where they actually did a pretty good job, I'd say. It looks fairly similar. Uh, the, the material feels completely different. Uh, this is a very like silky, smooth material, and this is a very like rough texture. Um, you can see the middle line is where I think there's the most deviation. It, there's, it has like this wave to it, um, and that's somewhat present on the legitimate model, but it's a little straighter. Just done a little bit better. Looking at the the buckle here, we have like a glossy sheen smooth uh, buckle, whereas this one's like a matte finish in a slightly darker color tone. Again, real fake, just for transparency here. Uh, the stitching is considerably better on the real, but the biggest difference is the color of the stitching here. We have a bright blue on the left, whereas we have a black on the real one. Coming up to the actual buckle, um, you have pretty cheap looking plastic. Um, you know, you'll see this on, on any plastic manufacturing line, basically where the plastic sticks together on the, on the assembly line, they, they break little pieces off when it's done being processed. And, and that's what these little indications are, uh, is my guess. And on the real one, um, we don't have that, so. Uh, let's get this off the NATO, and then uh, I'll show you those two as well. And then I'll just check the bezels here real quick too. So, oh my, my goodness, that is hard to turn. That's another giveaway so far. I'm using considerable force to turn this bezel. That is not good. Oh my goodness, I cut my finger here on this. Wow, okay. Well, smooth bezel action on the legitimate model is my guess. Oh yeah, it's not even close. That's a dead giveaway. And here we have the case backs themselves. So uh, we have a rotor on both. Um, you'll notice that they even went to all, they went to adding fake mechanical parts 
to the back of this watch despite it being a quartz movement. Uh, and I might even pop the case off this thing just to check for sure. Um, but you can see the movement is real on the authentic model. We have my, uh, my rotor here spinning very nicely. And we have, I think it's like a, uh, I can't remember, like a salamander or some kind of creature that is from that area of the, you know, that ocean specifically. Um, every one of these swatches has its own little animal on the back. The, you know, I'll, I'll just take this one off too, just to show you off this uh, Antarctic edition. So we have same thing, um, different, different little creature here. It's a little harder to see what that is on this one. The printing's not, not as good um, on the fakes, obviously. The colors look a lot better on the real one. And this is a heavier watch, which makes sense because it has a real movement. That rotor actually has weight to it and you can feel it really rotating, whereas this one is weightless. Uh, it really doesn't feel like anything at all. So let's see how the, the movement works on both. So obviously screwing this or, or turning it does, not, does nothing on the fake. Pulling it out to the first position, we have that date wheel again. And then the second position, oh, I'm not in the second position yet apparently. Okay, well we're having a tough time with this guy. Okay, there we go. So this actually is a hacking movement. We'll put it to the marketing time here. So that's interesting. The authentic is not a hacking movement, which you'll see. So you, you actually wind the watch by going counterclockwise on this one. Going forward does nothing. Uh, pulling it out to the first position, we go the opposite direction to change the date. So that's another giveaway. You go counterclockwise on the fake, clockwise on the real. And then pulling it out to the second position, we can set the time, but you'll see that the uh, movement is not hacking. You'll see that second hand jump around a lot when you're going in reverse. Um, so that's, you know, something to check for. Let me, uh, let me get the case back off of this guy and we can kind of look at that. Yeah, that came right off. So just a little bit of pressure. You could use a flathead screwdriver or a, or a case knife. Um, that came right off. So we've got, looks like dust and some hair already under the case back. All right, so I did get the case back off and I got the movement off. And so this is what it looks like underneath. You have just metal that's just, it's like a sheet of cheap metal with fingerprints all over it. So you can literally see fingerprints there uh, on the metal. And there's just, these little wheels are not actual wheels. They're just machined. And then you have a fake uh, brass rivet there in the middle. And the outside is just our, it's an entire clear circle uh, with some counterweight somewhere to keep this thing spinning. Um, I'm not really sure how they're getting this to spin. Um, it's definitely got a counterweight in it. That's just such an interesting thing. Uh, we do have the replaceable battery here. This is confirmed, obviously, quartz, uh, which we knew already coming in. Very loud uh, ticking noise coming from this watch, uh, which, you know, this watch is very quiet. And with the waterproofness, um, I kind of expected that. But yeah, you really can't hear the movement too well on the, on the authentic. That case back came off entirely too easily, so the waterproofness of this watch is very suspect. Um, something to keep in mind for sure. Um, I should probably have a microfiber cloth down because, again, none of these are sapphire. So something to think about when you're playing with these watches. Uh, but let me get this movement back inside and, and we'll... Uh, We'll come back here in just a second. Uh, last thing I'm gonna say about the, the back of the watch, uh, looking at the uh, the clear protector, which I haven't removed on either watch, you'll see the real one says Swatch Swiss. The fake one does nothing, it says nothing. Um, actually, does it even have one? No, it does not. So yeah, no, no uh, protector on the back, and this is clearly plastic acrylic, 
this is sapphire glass. You can just see looking at them that one is really, even with the protector on, much clearer and the other one is kind of foggy. And then the spring bars, uh, the fakes have more of a shiny spring bar, whereas the real one has kind of this like bead blasted uh, finish. And obviously they are not spring bars. They have those hex lugs, as I mentioned. So you'll see on the side of uh, each spring bar, you have kind of this like threaded section that's uh, a little bit wider. And then the fake has standard spring bar, uh, which you'd find on pretty much any watch. Jumping back to the dial, uh, or just rather the whole face of the watch, I did want to touch on a couple other things. Uh, I'm trying to identify specific things that you can just spot right away. Um, the black bezel being one. Um, the movement of the seconds hand is another one. These indexes for the 3, 6, 9, and 12. Let's zoom in even further, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Just look at the 3 versus the 3 on the fake, right? And the you know the six on the on the real one here. You can see what I'm saying about how they're filled with loom and kind of have texture to them. Look at the indexes for every other hour marker as well. You'll see what I'm saying. We also have um, the words Swatch AG 2023 above where it says Swiss made. That was another giveaway on the on the Moon Swatch that was fake that does not appear on the fake here either. So if it doesn't say Swatch AG 2023, another potential giveaway that it's a, a fake. Let's look at the loom here as well. Just wanna give you every possible detail I can. Already the loom on the real one, significantly brighter. It is so dull here on the fake it is loomed on the bezel. Oh, it's already fading. Wow, that loom on this one is horrible. Look at that bezel. Oh my goodness. Holy moly. That is not good. The, um, <laughs> the Atlantic one is better. We clearly have different uh, color, right? This is more of like a blue than a green. And you can clearly sell... You can see the... Um, the loom bleeding in the bezel here on this one as well. It is already fading on this watch. It, it's hard to show on camera, but um, it's staying nice and strong on the on the real one. So let's do dimensions. The uh, and I also learned I should have bought white gloves because I have cats. Forty two millimeters to the case, and forty six to the crown, and. We're 46 dead even to the crown on the real one and 42 to the case. I'm just gonna skip lug to lug because they look identical to me and I'm assuming that they're identical. So final thoughts on, I guess, both the Blanc Pond swatch and also the fake Blanc Pond swatch. Um, I really love what swatch is doing. I'll just say that. I, I do love the moon swatch. I think that they were right not to do a quartz Blanc Pond because Blanc Pond has never done a quartz watch, right? So I totally realize why they went with the System 51. That being said, raising the price to 400 from the 279 that the Moon Swatch was, I'm not really seeing the value uh, difference here. Is it worth another, you know, $120 basically? I really don't think so. The packaging's better. That helps. Um, it is waterproof to a certain depth. You know, that's nice. It's up to 50 fathoms, which is cool. Nice little Easter egg. Um, but it's a tough pill to swallow to say, I'm going to spend $400 on a plastic watch. And especially when you have things like this Hrudlin, which is, this is quickly becoming one of my favorite watches. This is not a fake, not a knockoff. It's a, it's a homage, $300. And they did some tweaks to it to kind of improve the dimensions and just the overall appearance. And it uses a really nice movement and just, you know, it's, it's really hard for me to justify paying 400 for this one. And there, there are differences too, between every one. So like this one doesn't have a date window, right? And that one does. And does the date window add value to you? I'm assuming the System 51 uh, 
either does or does not have a date window to begin with. So they're either just removing that feature from you and you have a ghost date on the on the fake or the, sorry the um, the Antarctic version, or they added somehow a date window to the Atlantic. I'm doubting that. I'm guessing that the System 51 has a date wheel and it's just a ghost date on the other versions. Um, these are things to consider when you're dropping $400 on a watch, right? Um, the strap is really nothing special. Like it's just a really cheap recycled plastic NATO, NATO uh, strap. So obviously I'm not going to tell you to buy a fake watch. A, a knockoff is a knockoff and I'm never going to recommend that you buy uh, a knockoff watch at this point. Um, I just, you know, the Moon Swatch was so much better executed, right? $279. Uh, yeah, it's quartz, but I love these watches. I think that they're super fun, and they came in a ton of different colors. You can pair them with cool straps like this. Um, I get so many compliments on the Moon Swatch, like way more than any of my actual Omegas. I don't know if I've ever been com complimented on an actual Omega before, but the uh, the Moon Swatch gets so many comments uh you know, when I wear it outside and $279 for that watch, if, if you can get it at retail is totally worth that. In my opinion, um, I just don't know that I can say the same thing about the Blanc Pond swatch. It's just really not for me. And I, I am a diver watch guy. I almost exclusively own dive watches, uh, on the Omega side. I have a couple Speedmasters too, but mostly Seamasters. Um, and I just don't know about this one. I really, I really love the Hrudlin. This is really quickly becoming one of my favorite watches that I wear quite often. Um, yeah, so <laughs> maybe that speaks for itself. But thank you guys for joining me again here on this video. Uh, I hope that you did like it, and uh, you know, hopefully we can do more of these in the future. I, I, I think that Blanc Pond, or sorry, Swatch, should keep doing these. I don't know what they'll do next, but. They are fun releases. They're good for the watch world. They're bringing attention back to some really historic brands that haven't been in the limelight for a while. So with that, you know, some good is coming out of it, even if I don't think that this is worth the price. All right, guys, take care.